Hey all you inklings, Harjur here. In my last video, I reviewed and tested some new inking tools and compared them to previous ones that I own. Since patrons are interested in more information, today I'll be using some different black ink markers as well as a bamboo reed pen and a paintbrush used with Dr. Phil Martin's Waterproof Black India Ink in an ink drawing demo, and explaining the differences, pros, and cons of each. Thanks for parking your brushes here and let the epic inking adventures begin. $7 patrons get all my new longer private YouTube videos, free passes to my six Skillshare videos along with info dense deconstructed art and Q&A posts, video notes, and sketch downloads. You can check out my public index of all my Patreon posts divided by category and with free public post links labeled for easy perusal by all. I'm sharing a shorter version of this demo publicly on YouTube, but if you're a $7 patron, then you're watching an in-depth, leisurely, almost real-time version with lots more information and instruction. So this California Scrub Jay and Pumpkin sketch is an original artwork I'm prepping for a fall Inktober workshop I'll be teaching at the Santa Cruz Art League in late October. It'll be ink line work and then color washes with ink products like Inktemps or Dr. Phil Martin's Bombay inks. And I'll also be doing a holiday painted ornaments and painting cards class in late November as well. And that'll also use Dr. Phil Martin's inks as it's a great waterproof medium that can be gloss varnished over for ornaments and such. And I'll also be teaching a class series covering four Golden Age Master Studies by famous female illustrators, and that'll also include lots of ink line work. So, plenty of exciting ink media projects and classes coming up from September through November for me this year. Anyway, I thought it would be useful to patrons if I inked these scrub jays and pumpkin sketches with different inking tools, so here we go. First, some quick updates regarding my inking tools. I've had a black waterproof light fast pigment ink marker with a comfy plastic fiber tip called a Zig Rider that I've used for a few years. And I just bought two new pens. Like the Zig Rider, these aren't sold as refillable, so I won't be buying them again. But I did get these two as I wanted to share that the Pigma Micron PN and the Sakura Pigma Sensei are also archival, light fast and waterproof, and with a comfy plastic fiber tip just like the Zig Rider. I found these at my local art store, Lens Arts in Santa Cruz, so if you're going to be taking any of my ink and wash workshops at the Santa Cruz Art League, then these are good options if you can't get a Zig Rider. Anytime you buy a pen, it's good to scribble with it and quickly check if it's waterproof or not. We can see that the Zig Rider is of course waterproof and my other two new pens are as well. The Urban Tea Drag ink that I applied with a glass and reed pen, however, is not waterproof as you can see it runs and that means we won't be following inking with that water soluble ink with wet colors over top. If you're going to be using that ink, then use it on its own or use it last so you don't get a runny mess or make the runny mess on purpose for water soluble ink effects. So for my scrub jay drawing where I do want fixed waterproof lines, I'm going to start with a Sakura Pigma Sensei pen. Since I wanted to see how this pen handled because I haven't used it before. It's about the same width as my Zig Rider, a bit smaller actually at 0.4 millimeters. It feels about the same and no real difference in quality or feel as I ink with it and the 0.1 millimeter difference in the nib width isn't also that obvious. When inking with a fiber plastic tip tool like a marker, the ink can skip a bit on watercolor paper because watercolor paper can have texture like this cold press finish and also has that fibrous cotton content. So you'll have to be happy with those ink gaps which might suit your subject or you have to go back and double up on your ink lines. And you can see me wiggling back and forth and doing that here sometimes so I can get full lines instead of some skipped lines and areas. And skipping on textured or cotton papers aside, markers are super convenient and portable and the easiest inking tool to use for most folks. No unpredictability here, no ink blobs, no liquid ink that can make a mess, no variable line width if you use a fine tip, and it's a steady firm writing tip that doesn't squish or change in any way. And that predictability and ease of use makes it a very popular and easy inking tool. The skipping that happens a bit with the markers on this cold pressed watercolor paper is great for affecting feathers and little wispy dashy vectors. Feathery little ink strokes are a great idea for a subject that has fluffy fur or feathers. A confident bold ink line is marvelous and definitely has its place in inked pieces and I've used those a lot, but smaller wispy strokes are better for a bird like this scrub jay. For painting in watercolor or gouache, I often say I start with doing the focal point or the hardest area, like the face, head, and the hands. This is because I want to know if the hardest part is successful before I move on to the easier parts of a piece. However, for inking, I found that I need warm-up strokes, and if I don't do these on a separate paper first, 
I find it works just as well to start inking in the easier non-focal areas of a drawing. That way I can use these easier areas as my inking warm-up exercise instead. This reduces the chance of me getting clunkier lines in a more difficult area that needs more finesse than I have when I just start drawing with my ink. This is why I didn't just jump in and start inking the head first. And don't be afraid of rotating your paper to get long fluid lines or curves. Your hand and arm both do long lines in a horizontal direction more easily as the horizontal direction follows the pivot of your wrist and elbow more naturally. And probably you also won't be filming a video while you are inking your drawing. So that way you don't have any pressure to sort of keep your drawing in one place. And this is one of the reasons why I don't actually ink on camera a lot because I want to get the best inking and that requires a lot of rotation, which doesn't actually film well. I ended up doing most of this bird on his side to get those longer, more graceful lines. And it also helps to abstract this animate subject somewhat, which can help further in rendering accurately sometimes. Once you've done several bird wings and tails, you'll start to spot patterns in how feathers are overlaid and how the breast and neck area has short, fine, downy feathers while the wings and tail have the longest feathers. This is a California scrub jay or a Felicoma californica and you can check out my separate video for a scrub jay ink journaling class demo to learn all about this amazing corvid who is one of the smartest animals in the world. And I flipped it back right side up for his face and now I'm warmed up and ready to ink that harder head and eye area. And you can see that he has a whitish bib and blue necklace pattern to his feathers around his neck and a lovely vibrant blue head with a gray eye area and striking white eyebrow feathers. So I'm trying to clearly show those regions just in this black ink drawing. There aren't any colors yet but I want to have some clear demarcations for what those regions are. He also has a really clever look, such a sharpness in his gaze, and I'm trying to capture that in his expression as I draw in ink as well. I switched to the Pigma Micron PN just for a little bit and again it's a 0.5 millimeter tip and the fully plastic nib as with the Zig Rider and the Sakura Pigma Sensei. It allows me to write comfortably at any angle rather than having to hold it more upright like other Microns with a partially metal tip. So this marker pen handled very similarly to the other two types I have which are the Zig Rider and that Sakura Pigma Sensei that I just tried using. And I didn't feel any need to keep testing it further because I know that all three are basically working the same. So I switched to the more worn in Zig Rider marker for my pumpkins. As the only difference between the two other markers and the Zig is that the Zig skipped just a bit more on this cold press Arches watercolor paper because it's an older marker with less ink. While the first two markers were literally being used for the first time on this drawing and had juicier ink reserves. This is the back side of the cold press Arches watercolor paper and it has less texture than rough watercolor paper and also less texture than the front of the cold press watercolor paper. But if you want an even smoother eggshell type finish to your paper, then you'll want to use my favorite paper, which is hot press arches watercolor paper. Hot press papers will be easiest to do ink lines on, but they still aren't as smooth to ink on as an almost glossy polished Bristol vellum or cardstock. Even hot pressed watercolor paper tends to have a bit more tooth and some cotton fibers that will stick to the marker tip and sometimes these are going to have to be picked off your nib. But these fiber clogs will be far less an issue with a marker than with a the metal dip nib pen where you have a metal slit that readily catches cotton fibers. 
But as I mentioned, the textural quality of this cold pressed cotton watercolor paper is great for wispy feathers as the markers skip a bit as they ink. And they are also great for the pumpkin stems and the organic look of the pumpkin skin because you get all those gnarly stems and those blemishes on the pumpkin skin and the skippy texture really helps with that. The shadow fill areas get almost a pencil shading look to them as the ink sort of dry brushes over the texture of the paper. And you really gotta love all that personality that's added from these textural effects. A really singular paint fill would block out any color that would come over the top later and also would be more boring than having this sort of gradual shading fill here. If you're using a paintbrush, that's not going to skip ink or get caught in cotton paper fibers. And I'll demo that later in this video, but a brush is harder to wield and keep steady than a stiff tip marker or a dip nib pen. So it's a tool that requires more practice and training. One of the things you can do while inking with a tool that skips on watercolor paper like these markers is create thinner than intended strokes so that when you have to double back over them to fill the skipped gaps, the line width ends up the right width as it gets thicker after you double up on it. If you start with a thicker line in the first pass, you may not like the even thicker lines you get when you double over them in a second pass. Also, using a newer marker with more fresh ink reserves reduces skipping so you have to double over your lines less. So you can keep that in mind as well when you're choosing a marker or a project. And it's an unintended positive bonus, but since the absorbent cotton paper keeps the pens from scooting around too fast, you will have an easier time doing curves and lines as they will go down on the paper slower. Sometimes the ultra smooth bristol or vellum finishes on pulp papers for inking can let your inking tool glide so much and so fast that it can get a bit out of control. And that can lead to some clumsy lines if you're not careful. So that slowing down mechanism is a nice thing to have on this slightly rougher paper. I never owned or inked with markers or pens for many, many years and always pushed myself to ink with a metal dip nib pen or a paintbrush as I found it more gratifying in an old fashioned artistic way and it's also far more green and environmentally friendly than buying plastic markers over and over since dip nib pens or paintbrushes and an ink bottle can last virtually forever well, markers and pens run out and are usually tossed out pretty quick, though I hear from some artists who refill disposable markers and pens with new ink if they can. Anyway, I was doing live streams a lot about three years back, and I bought several waterproof ink markers as they were faster and more convenient to use than a brush or a dippable pen on a live stream. And so I currently own 13 markers total in various colors and brands. Um, most of the ones I have are the Zig Riders. But some of these are starting to run dry and I won't be buying any more markers or refilling them. I'm going to be returning to inking with a paintbrush and my other dippable inking tools so I can just have that sort of internal relief of being more green and using the ink bottles that I already have. I don't usually ink on camera. I get right to the painting part as that's more interesting to film, watch, and discuss. And like I said, rotating my paper constantly as I draw or ink doesn't make for the best video to watch. It makes me dizzy even when I'm editing it. But this is one of those rare videos where I want to show and discuss just the inking and my inking tool so folks can know more about that part of my process. This drawing is for a late October Santa Cruz Art League class, so it has a very autumnal theme. And inking it has made me feel like fall and October are already here, and all the spooky holiday fun is also already here. Fall and winter are my favorite seasons because my birthday, Elijah's birthday, and at least four major holidays occur in those seasons that makes them a lot of fun and plus the weather is so much more mellow than like the allergy ridden spring and summer seasons. Well wizards, I hope you enjoyed joining me for some ink drawing while I demoed and discussed some of my different inking tools. If you're watching the shorter version of this demo, it's the public one on YouTube. If you're watching the almost real-time version, then you're a $7 patron with access to the full leisurely demo with lots more info and instruction on my Patreon. So please like, comment, and check out my website dashboard for easy access to all my online platform links on a single page to support my art creation and instruction. Thanks for parking your brushes here and wishing you all inky art adventures.